eukaryotes have evolved a, a series of mechanisms called RNA interference and RNA interference is involved in defense against foreign DNA or RNA such as viruses or transposons and in RNA interference um, a double-stranded RNA and recall that RNA is usually single-stranded um, but if the cell sees a double-stranded RNA it signals the presence of invading um, um, RNA or DNA so viruses or transposons and there is a, 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 a sequence of mechanisms that kick in uh, called RNA interference where the cell goes and destroys those foreign invading RNA and DNA and these mechanisms are also used in order to regulate the expression of um, uh, endogenous or uh, kind of the normal genes of um, the organism and uh, we will start with that microRNAs which are a uh, set of functional RNAs that use RNA interference mechanisms to control how much particular genes are expressed in the cell. So let's say we have um, a gene in the genome and here is our genome and this is the sequence, the coding sequence of a gene. Here's the start codon. And this is 5 prime and this is 3 prime. And um, um, this gene, when it's transcribed, since this is the coding strand, will make an RNA which will contain the sequence 5 prime AUG CG CUA 3 prime recall that the sequence of the mRNA is the same as the sequence of the coding strand except that the T's are replaced by U's now in this genome somewhere else okay so maybe this is a continuation of the genome somewhere else in the genome it could also be a different chromosome um, it could be absolutely anywhere we have another gene and this is the micro RNA gene whose coding strand has the sequence U A G C G C A U three prime and then the genome continues. This particular gene, the microRNA gene, when it's transcribed, will produce um, what's known as a pre microRNA with the sequence. 5 prime U A G C G C A U. Once again, remembering that uh, the sequence of the RNA, transcribed RNA, is the same as the sequence of the coding strand. And what's interesting about the sequence of this microRNA is that it's complementary to the sequence of the mRNA of the other gene when written, written 3 prime to 5 prime. So we can write 3 prime A U C. So we're reading like this G C G U A 5 prime. And um, you know, you can't have a different gene in the genome have a, a, a sequence that's complementary to another gene in the genome just by chance. 
And so this this um, microRNA gene has evolved over millions of years of evolution to have sequence that happens to be complementary to this uh, the first gene. And this first gene, we will call it the target gene. Um, and the the microRNA is complementary to the target gene for about 22 base pairs. So not the entirety of the target gene, but only about 22 base pairs. Now, when this microRNA gene is transcribed, it makes this stem loop structure where the region that's complementary to the target gene is shown in purple. And this um, uh, stem loop structure is processed and exported out of the nucle uh, nucleus into the cytoplasm. In the cytoplasm, a protein called dicer processes it, it, processes it and dices it so that you remove this um, 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 hairpin loop and you end up with a, a um, double-stranded RNA which is found by a, a set of proteins called the RNA-induced silencing complex or RISC, RNA-induced silencing complex. And then the RNA-induced silencing complex takes the the sequence in the microRNA, the purple sequence that's complementary to the target gene, and it goes and binds the target gene using base complementarity since we saw that the microRNA sequence is complementary to the sequence of the target gene. And once it, um, it uh, latches on to the target mRNA, it acts in two ways. One is it inhibits the translation of the, the protein of the target gene. And the second thing is that it removes the poly A tail of the target mRNA and thereby um, um, allows or causes this um, um, the, uh, the target mRNA to degrade. In either case, you end up with less protein of the target gene and that means that the microRNA represses gene expression. It reduces how much protein you have of the target gene and thereby it controls or modulates the amount of protein of the target gene. I mentioned earlier that RNA interference probably evolved as a mechanism for defending against viral um, um, uh, RNA or foreign DNA. And let's see how that works. So once again, let's say I have a genome and a virus has inserted itself or integrated itself in various locations in the genome. Um, recall that viruses use the host cell's DNA replication machinery to make more copies of themselves. And the best way to accomplish that is to insert many copies of the virus into the host genome and so that you can make uh, many copies of the virus very fast. And let's say we have um, the virus in, in, in inserted in, in a particular location. And these are two strands of the DNA where the virus is located. And I will say this is strand A and strand B. And here is the virus sequence that's been inserted in. However, this virus sequence happens to be inserted near 
an endogenous or a, 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 a normal gene that's found in the genome. Okay, so so we have uh, the virus being inserted in various locations, but we are considering a situation where the virus is inserted near the endogenous gene. And the second thing to keep in mind is that the for the virus, A is the coding strand. Coding. Whereas for the endogenous gene, B is the coding strand. Okay, so uh, the virus is utilizing um, 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 strand B as template, whereas the endogenous gene just happens to utilize strand A as template. And, um, you know, you may ask, you know, how likely is this to happen? And yes, it's it's a pretty uh, uh, an unlikely configuration. However, since the virus makes many, many, many copies of itself, that increases the chances that you will have a virus that lands um, near an endogenous gene in such a way that the virus is coded on one strand and the endogenous gene is coded on the other strand. So now we can say, um, you know, let's say this is the, the sequence of the RNA that's made by the virus. It's going to be, you know, just any sequence, AUG, CUG. Now, the RNA that's going to be made by the endogenous gene is going to be whatever that sequence happens to be. But when it um, comes to the part where the virus is integrated, the sequence is going to be complementary to the sequence of the virus since the endogenous gene is using strand A as template. So we will have C C A G C A U three prime. And so um, once again, just like in the case of microRNAs, we have now two single stranded RNAs that are in fact complementary to each other. And they will in 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 the, in the cell they are going to because of their complementarity they are going to base pair with each other and form double stranded rna which is detected by the rna interference machinery in order to silence uh, gene expression so here we have the 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 viral gene coded on the top strand and makes the cyan transcript. And then we have the gene, which is coded on the bottom strand and makes the pink transcript. In Once these um, transcripts have been made, they are going to find each other because they're complementary and make double-stranded RNA. And this double-stranded RNA will be found by this protein called DISA, um, which is going to process it. And then these little double-stranded fragments are going to be bound by the RNA-induced silencing complex. So the mechanism is basically the same as uh, in microRNAs. And the RNA-induced silencing complex will use the pink sequence. So the, the RNA of the endogenous gene that happens to be complementary to the viral RNA to go and hunt the viral RNA shown here in cyan and then destroy the viral RNA. Now, 
this same principle can also apply to a situation where in this inserted gene instead of being a viral gene is in fact a transgene which means it's um, a gene um, that um, scientists have constructed using genetic engineering techniques and um, you know this transgene is introduced into the genome of uh, some host uh, organism and um, this transgene much like the viral gene if it happens to be inserted near an endogenous gene and is coded on the opposite strand as the endogenous gene will get silenced and this is in fact how um, uh, RNA interference uh, or one of the discoveries that led to um, our understanding of RNA interference was made when Richard Jorgensen um, was inserting transgenes for this pigmentation in petunias and he found that they were uh, plants that lacked pigmentation in uh, parts of the flowers and it turned out that this was because the transgene was inserting near some endogenous gene and in this case um, since the transgene sequence was actually the same as the sequence of the normal pigmentation gene the RNA interference um, caused the uh, silencing not just of the transgene but also of the normal pigmentation gene and that's why there was no pigmentation in parts of the flower and finally it's worth mentioning that um, small interfering RNAs or siRNAs um, which is what we've been discussing are an important tool in uh, um, molecular biology uh, research since we can in order to understand how um, the function of a particular gene we can in fact design um, a, a double-stranded RNA um, and introduce this double-stranded RNA into cells um, thereby silencing that gene um, and reducing its protein expression and then we can study the phenotypes of uh, the cells to determine what function that particular gene performs and so siRNA small interfering RNAs are an important tool and reducing the protein expression using this mechanism is called knocking down a gene